Welcome humans to ETSK Tutorials. So this is going to be an episode going over how uh, to do basic light mapping stuff. Like we have ambient occlusion going on right there. We have some uh, lights that are set to auto so that they can uh, both be light mapped objects and real time objects. We have some baked only lights over here. We had some dual light mapping uh, with bump maps set up and a lot of other cool stuff. So that is what this episode is going to be going over. Uh, one thing that I want to quickly note is the fact that I've recorded this video like two times already and the audio was just off it kind of looked like a foreign movie that was dubbed in English uh, so if that happens in this video I apologize that's something I'm trying to work out and trying to work out all the technical stuff and speaking of which uh, if you guys could also let me know uh, if the screen looks okay as far as resolution goes because I'm trying to find a resolution that looks good both somewhere in between 720p and 1080p so basically if you could just tell me if you can read the screen at different resolutions that would be awesome and really helpful to me. So yeah, let's jump into this tutorial. All right, so this is the basic scene and project that we're going to be starting off with. Um, everything's pretty simple. We just have a cube that is set as the floor. Uh, we have a couple of cubes that are pretty much the same thing, but they're just scrunched down to look more like boxes to demonstrate the ambient occlusion. Uh, then I just drag and dropped the uh, Unity's default first person controller uh, game object from the standard assets. Um, and then what I did on top of that was that I made two game objects. One was a spotlight and one is just a cube just to kind of represent a gun from, from a first person shooter. And I made those both a child of the main camera. Um, and let's see, what else do I have? I have four point lights out here um, to demonstrate the auto lights that are going to be uh, used for both light mapping and real time lights. Um, and then I have a bunch of little lights down here that are more kind of uh, meant to represent like, let's say if you're playing a sci-fi game, like stuff like uh, computer lights and um, just like really tiny detailed lights where you have like a lot of lights that you do want to show those lights on your scene and projecting everywhere and cool re or cool looking lights, but you don't want them to all be real time lights because that would be a lot of lights and that would slow your game down. So you want to make those ones baked only so that they take up almost zero performance. Um, so that's what these little lights are meant to represent and I made them green so that let me demonstrate if I walk over here uh, with the gun you can see that all of these lights are lighting up the gun because you can see the green light on the gun um, so that might look pretty cool but in our situation we just want to simulate uh, what it would be like to have that be ignored so that we're not using up performance for that um, so right now everything is real time, everything has bump maps on it, and um, theoretically this scene is really slow as far as the lighting goes right now. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to need to do is we're going to go to Window, and then go to light mapping and we're going to open up the light mapping window. So this is just like any other Unity window. You can dock it anywhere you want. Me personally, I like to put it next to my inspector and I do not know what just happened. I think, I, okay, I just need to readjust these things. Okay, and then this is typically how I like to have the Unity editor set up when I am working. So that way I can switch back and forth between the inspector and light mapping. Uh, but you can set it up whatever way that you want. It's just a window just to be laid out just like any other window. All right, so uh, what we are going to do first is how about we set up uh, all of the cubes in our scene. So we have, let's see, um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six cubes in total. Um, so this cube right here is the cube that is meant to represent the gun. So I'm going to rename this cube gun. Uh, and what we want to have this gun be is not static. So that is this checkbox right here. We want to make sure that is unchecked so that the engine knows that this game object is going to be moving around and we want the light that's uh, casted onto this gun uh, to be changing every frame because the gun's going to be moving around all the time. Uh, that is the only gun that we actually want to be dynamic, aka not static. So dynamic and static are opposite of each other. Uh, so every other cube that is in our scene, the floor and these boxes over here, we do want to set to static. So we can just uh, hit that checkbox right there that says static uh, when we have all of those selected. Um, another way that you can do that if you don't want them completely static all across the board in case you're also doing... Um, 
some other advanced stuff with like occlusion calling or something like that or path navigation uh, stuff like that uh, you can actually click on this little arrow right here and there's a drop down menu and you can make it static or not static on different parts of being static and in this case uh, we are looking at light map static so that is the one that you want to make sure is checked um, or you can just have them all be checked uh, it doesn't really matter too much. It just depends on if you're doing something tricky or fancy with your game. All right, so that is all the cubes in the scene. So now let's do the lights. Um, oh, actually, let me show you the other way that you can actually set uh, this to static or not static. Um, with all of these selected, I'm going to go to the light mapping tab. And you can see that we have an option right here that says light map static. So we can check that or uncheck that if we want to. Um, so yes, that is how to turn things static or not static. So let's select the four point lights that are in the corner of the map right here. And these are already set to auto by default. So we are just going to leave those as auto. The other options we have are real time only and baked only, which we will demonstrate on the little lights. So let's select those lights. And for some reason, my controls are kind of messed up, but I guess that doesn't really matter for right now. So under light mapping, under the light mapping tab, we can select baked only. That means that these lights aren't going to interact with anything other than just light mapping information. Um, so the other way that we can do that is we can go into the inspector and then under the light component, under light mapping, we can select baked only. Um, and we might as well also set these to static uh, so that the engine actually knows that they are static and not going to be moving. I forgot to do that on the four point lights. Uh, so let's set those there. All right, now let's take a look at the spotlight and see how we need to set up the spotlight. Um, so we want this one to be light mapping real time only. So that is going to make sure that uh, this is a real time light and it is going to interact with the bump maps because when it's baked only uh, the light mapping doesn't have uh, any bump maps in it. Uh, so we're going to be doing uh, dual light mapping so that we can see both bump maps and uh, real time lighting and all that cool stuff so that it saves on performance yet does still look realistic and pretty cool. All right, so uh, I believe that is everything that we need to do. So the next thing we need to go to is uh, bake under the light mapping tab. Uh, so uh, mode, we want to have that set to dual light maps. If you're on like a mobile device or something that you really want to be really, really fast, you might want to just do single light maps just to save on performance. Uh, but in our case, we're going to be doing dual light maps because we want that, want that flashlight and we still want the realism of the bump maps. Uh, as far as quality, uh, pretty much just set this to high. Um, if you are messing with the settings and you keep rendering it over and over again to see what it looks like, you might want to set it to low so that it renders faster. But in the final game, just set it to high because the uh, final file size are going to be the same between low and high. So in the end, just make sure it's high. Uh, that's the only thing that that affects and they almost look pretty much the same anyways. Uh, the next thing we want to look at is ambient occlusion. So if you're uh, wondering what ambient occlusion is, that is what was between the boxes. So as you can see right now, it's just all nice and solid. But what we want is like shadows and the cracks and stuff to make it look just a little bit more realistic. So for that, we use ambient occlusion. So if you drag this to anything other than zero, you get these two options down here. Uh, typically, I like to just put ambient occlusion up all the way because I think it looks really cool. Uh, as far as distance, we could do something like two. Uh, contrast, I don't know, just play around with it, whatever looks cool. I'm just going to put it somewhere in the middle there and I think that will probably look cool. Um, the next thing that you want to look at is resolution. Uh, right now it's set to 50, um, but I'm probably going to set it to something more like 20. Uh, but you're going to want to play around with this and depending on your game, uh, you might want to make this a much smaller number to save on the file size of your final game, especially if you're doing something like web player where the player has to download it every single time they play the game. You're going to want to keep the file size of the light maps really small. Um, in this case, like if you set it to something like 50, you get like 10 megabytes for the light maps. But if you set it to something like 10, you get like 5 megabytes. So you just got to play around with this number to try to keep your file sizes low. Uh, if you go too low, the light mapping looks kind of splotchy. But in some situations, that does still look kind of cool. Um, and if you go too high, I mean, it will just look normal. But if you go too high, you're just kind of wasting memory and wasting space for the final file size. So that's just a number to be played around 
on with. You want to find the right balance between what looks good and the final final size so that your game isn't too large of a file. Um, the next thing we have down here is clear. That will get rid of all of the light maps. Um, and then we have some options down here like bake scene and bake selected. Uh, bake scene will bake everything in the scene and all of the light maps and bake selected will bake only what you have selected so that if you don't want to bake the entire scene um, and you just want to see what a certain small part looks like of the map, you can do bake selected. Uh, but in our case, we are going to select bake scene. But when I click this button, I'm actually going to cut the video because it takes a little bit of time to load. Um, and yes, we will be back in just a second. All right, and like that, all of our light mapping is pretty much set up and it all looks pretty good. So you can see it is a little bit splashy, but I think that looks all right and mixed in the right setting, it can look still really realistic and you don't really notice the splashiness that much. So there's always settings to be played with. Uh, at the time, I believe, let me double check, uh, the light mapping is only 5.3 megabytes, so I could probably bump that up to like 10 megabytes or something and do a number more like 50 or something, but it all depends on your game and uh, how much area you have to light map and all of that stuff. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, the ambient occlusion is working. As you can see, there's kind of like not really shadows, but there's ju it's just like dark areas in between the boxes, and it almost looks like real-time lighting and real-time shadows. Uh, so that's a really cool effect, and it's really powerful, and I think it just adds a lot of realism to any scene. So that is something that's definitely worth using. And as you can see, the light uh, does mix with it very well, the real-time light. Um, and we're only getting bump maps uh, in the real-time light or the flashlight that we're shining. Um, and we're getting lights on the gun every time I walk to the corners of all of these different lights. Um, and these lights down here will not affect the gun right now. As you can see, none of them are shining on the gun. Um, so if we have, you know, just hundreds and hundreds of lights like that in the scene, we can still get the cool, awesome effect of having all of those different lights, uh, but without hardly any performance at all, because it's just all saved inside of the light map. So it's just whatever the cost of uh, drawing a light map is, is the cost of drawing a light map. It doesn't matter how many uh, baked only lights that you have attached to a light map. Uh, a light map is a light map and it's going to perform the same uh, pretty much no matter what. So that will save on a lot of performance and look really cool. And it looks really nice the way that the real time light mixes with the light map so that it doesn't just like 100% overpower it. It kind of mixes with it and it adds a lot of realism. So that is really cool. Um, one other thing that I want to show you is this folder right here uh, called Level 1. So the scene that I was walking around in, I had named Level 1. Um, and the way that Unity works is when you build a light map, it's going to save it in a folder uh, that has the name of the scene uh, that all of those light maps belong to. So in this case, uh, Level 1. So if you're wondering where the exact files are for the light map, that is where they will be. Um, oh, one other cool thing that I guess is worth showing real quick is just this little checkbox right here where you can turn light maps on or off when you have the light mapping um, window selected right there. So, yep, light maps on and off, just kind of a useful thing for if you just want to check to make sure everything is looking right and all of that cool stuff. So, basically, that is everything going over light maps. So, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and until next time, Homo sapiens. Keep making games.